Good morning and welcome as we gather for worship this morning. It is the third Sunday of Advent and we progress and move closer to Christmas and the birth of Jesus. We continue to look at Jesus and the titles that were given to him upon his birth and throughout his life. And today in particularly in particular, we emphasize the name Emmanuel, uh, given to Jesus and acclaimed for him. We welcome you to this time of worship. I remind you that at First Congregational Church, that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. As we gather now in God's presence, let us center our hearts and minds in God as we listen to the music of the prelude. And I open worship with these words from Mary's Magnificat uh, from the first chapter of Luke. Mary spoke, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, who has looked with favor on me, a lowly servant. From this day all generations shall call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is the name of the Lord, whose mercy is on those 
who fear God from generation to generation. The arm of the Lord is strong and has scattered the proud in their conceit. God has cast down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty away. God has come to the aid of Israel, the chosen servant, remembering the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Amen. In the past, God spoke through the prophets in many times and many ways. But in these final days, God spoke to us through a son. The sun is the light of God's glory and the imprint of God's being. We light the third Advent candle as a sign that God is with us, bringing the light and joy amid every conceivable darkness. Come what may, we are not alone. We wait, we hope, trusting that the one born to Mary is fully God. Jesus, you are Emmanuel. Let us be in a spirit of prayer. Who is like you, God most high, drawing near to those who are low and in need to raise them up? We thank you that you have not left us alone, but that in your son, Jesus, you came to be with us as one of us. May we sense you near us even now through your spirit. May we take heart in our darkest, and most fearful times, trusting that you abide with us, our Lord, Emmanuel. And by your grace, may others know through what we do that God is with them. Amen. The scripture today comes from Matthew's gospel. It is the first chapter, verses 18 through 25, and it describes Joseph dis discovering Mary's pregnancy and then the actions to be taken afterwards. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet Isaiah. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. 
This is the word of God for you, God's people. Amen. And now we hear the song played by the band, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. As we gather today, we remember Jesus as Emmanuel, God with us, bringing us the presence and the very being of God to live among us, to dwell with us, and to walk with us. I was a little slow on the uptake this week in suggesting O Come, O Come, Emmanuel for the band. I love uh, doing it, and I love uh, the way the band does it. Uh, but I probably should have suggested the more modern version of that, which is Joan Osborne's One of Us, which asks the question, what if God was one of us, just a slob like one of us? 
just a stranger on the bus trying to make his way home. To understand through Jesus' birth that God has come to dwell on earth with us, to understand us in a special way so that we can identify with him, so that God can identify with us to understand our problems, to understand the trials that we go through. These are the gifts that we receive through Emmanuel. And it is understanding that he is like us, uh, that God no longer requires us to become like God, to somehow find perfection in our life, to somehow be divine and achieve that for our own. But instead, God comes to dwell among us. God comes to be Emmanuel, to be like us. And so we see many representations of God given in now uh, contemporary literature and movies. Uh, some of us have read that popular book a number of years ago called The Shack, where God comes in the person uh, that looks like a black woman. Uh, or you may remember the old movie from the 70s, Oh God, uh, with John Denver, but uh, God is portrayed by George Burns. Uh, and then more contemporary movies, Bruce Almighty and its sequel, Evan Almighty, where God is portrayed as Morgan Freeman. So again, all giving representations where God takes on human form. Uh, but we see that particularly uh, in uh, the birth of Jesus, in the coming of God in Christ, God with us. God walking among us. Uh, and it means a lot that we identify with Jesus, that we identify uh, that God is really like us. There was a great story this week, sad and then with a great ending, uh, about a family in Iowa who put up a black Santa, an inflatable Santa, and they'd done this for a couple of years. But this year into their mailbox came this hateful letter uh, criticizing them and condemning them for putting up a black Santa, insisting on Santa being white. Uh, and they were very disheartened by that, wondering, you know, are they really living in a community that welcomes them, uh, that accepts them? Uh, but then what should happen is a number of their neighbors heard about this letter and heard about what had been done to them. Uh, and the neighbors started buying black Santas as well and putting them up in their yards, even though they didn't happen to be black. Uh, but to uh, show solidarity with this family, to show that this was a loving community, they put up their own Black Santas. I thought that had a great ending uh, and understanding how we do identify uh, when Santa or Jesus looks like us. So many of us grew up with the image of Jesus, of that kind of uh, white, blue-haired, blue-eyed, long-haired Jesus that was often uh, in the Sunday school classrooms, didn't look anything like Jesus probably looked like, but it's the one that we identified with. Uh, Jesus was a Middle Eastern man, so probably uh, was much more brown skin in tone, probably had dark hair, uh, maybe curly dark hair, uh, and but that's not the way we identified with it. But each of us, I think, can understand that we may uh, look at Jesus to be like us because God came to be like us. And so if you look at nativity scenes that are made uh, in different cultures, you will see that the Holy Family and Jesus himself looks different looks like the culture in which that nativity scene is created. So in a Japanese nativity scene, Jesus looks like a Japanese baby. In a Mexican nativity scene, Jesus looks like a Mexican baby. In an African nativity scene, Jesus looks African. And you know what? They're all right because God came to be one of us. And we identify with that, and God identifies with us. And we see that in the representations. So it's when all of them are right that ours can be right too. So we don't have to say the one we grew up with is wrong. We just have to recognize that it is equally right with all of the others. 
God is one of us and identifies with one of us, understands us, understands our struggles. And that is so important. We know it through the self-help groups, AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, that people find help in those groups because they come together with people who struggle with the same problems. Uh, the people that they are talking to, the people that they are receiving counseling from are also alcoholics like themselves who struggle with the same addictions. And because of that, they find uh, that people that know their struggle give them help for the struggle. The same is true for Overeaters Anonymous who struggle differently, who struggle now with food and an addiction to food. Narcotics Anonymous, each of them uh, identifying and finding help in people that are just like them. That is what we receive uh, in this incarnation, in God coming to be and live among us, in Jesus being Emmanuel. We receive a savior that understands our problems, who helps us with our problems because he has gone through similar things, that he has lived a life on earth. And so uh, we have this savior that comes and understands us and lives among us. But by doing that, again, God doesn't require us to become divine. God comes and becomes human, takes on the human form of Jesus, is human in the person of Jesus. And by doing that, God makes humanity and our particular lives holy because God comes in human form. And so it, it changes and transforms our lives, giving them great meaning and great possibility so that it's not just us waiting to escape this human form, but it's actually being challenged to live as humans as fully as possible because that is divine action. That is what Jesus did. And so it becomes our goal to be just as human as we can because that is special. That is, is uh, uh, the possibility that is lifted up for us and is exemplified in the perfect human life that Christ lived for us. And so while we want Jesus to identify with us and be white or Mexican or Japanese or African, uh, in all these ways, it is not Jesus taking on our values. It is Jesus identifying with us and then showing us how to live a human life with God's values. And so we seek to be like Jesus as Jesus was God being like us. And finally, we have that assurance that Jesus does come to be with us and in so doing, bring God's presence. God is with us. And that is important to remember that God is with us always. No matter what we face, no matter where we go, God is with us. In these pandemic times, when we can't be with family and friends the way that we would like to be, in our isolation, it's important to remember that God is with us, even now, and especially now. We aren't alone in our isolation. God is with us. As we go through the trials of life, as we face <clears throat> illness, and maybe even death itself, and feel alone and scared, it is then that we take hold of that promise once more. God is with us, and God will not desert us. God will not leave us. God walks with us through it all, even into death itself. And we bring and receive courage because of that, because God is with us always. Emmanuel. And as disciples of Christ, we are those who go to help others know the same thing. Take heart. God is with you. 
and we try to live that out before them to demonstrate God's unconditional love that surrounds them and wraps them in caring arms. We try to do that with our lives through our actions. And we rejoice today that the promise has come that a child is born and his name is Emmanuel. God is with us. Thanks be to God. Amen. And again, I invite you to be in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we anticipate and await the birth of the Christ child anew. Remind us again that this child is the promised one, Emmanuel, God with us, that your Messiah is you yourself coming to abide and live as a human being to be with us. May we take hold of that promise. May it give us encouragement that you understand the problems that we face and that you also will be there as we face them. Help us to be truly human, human like Jesus lived, exemplifying your values living for you, showing his love for you, but also his love for his neighbor, especially those who were outcast, those who were forgotten, those who were in misery. He came to bring your salvation to them. Allow us to pick up this work to also carry on and let others know that they are not forgotten, that your love is there for them. Help us to be a sign of that love for others. May we encourage them on their journey and let them know that you are with their lives and not just our sole possession. We give thanks for your work among us and in us, and we take courage from it. And now we pray as Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we remember our offering, we remember our gifts and our support to God's work, we encourage you to be generous in this holiday season to the many needs and agencies that work within our community. We also encourage you to remember the church in your giving as well. There is also the opportunity to participate in the church's holiday fair, usually one of the biggest fundraisers, always the biggest fundraiser for the church each year, uh, but we can't do it in person this year, so we're doing it remotely online. We invite you to go and to participate in the auction and bid on items that you find there, to go to the cookie sale and purchase cookies uh, that you can pick up uh, later this month, and also to purchase crafts that have been uh, created for you and that you can also pick up later this month. All of that you can find on our Facebook page uh, and or by calling the office and you will be sent an email link to them. So we invite you to participate in our holiday, holiday fair as well. But we continue to worship as we listen to the hymn, and I invite you to sing along as you are able at home uh, the Advent hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
We come to the conclusion of worship. As we gather, uh, we are now sent. We are sent out to be God's presence in this world, to know that God has come and is with us, Emmanuel. As you go, may it be the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship and unity of the Holy Spirit that is with you now and always. Go in peace. Amen.